Hopper. So Yu Shanahan is a senior lecturer in computer science at the Royal Holloway, University of London. And the title for his talk is Introduction to Open, Re um, to Open Research Data and Training. Please give him a warm hand. A warm welcome, a hand. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. Um, so can, can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, so uh, before we get started, I am aware that we have a, a spectrum of people, a, a scary array of, 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 of software carpentry people who will look at this and think, yes, and. Uh, and then hopefully there'll be some other people who, who, for, for whom this will be some, some, some new material. Um, uh, just a few points also to make. Uh, I do have a tendency for my voice to just go down, the volume to go down to nothing or to talk too quickly. So please don't be, you know, you're not being rude if you at the back or anywhere shout at me and say, speak up, talk more slowly, whatever, okay? So um, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to talk about in terms of this, this really, really nice session you know, of this lovely, relaxed uh, arrangement we have here, and talking about looking at the training that's going on for open research data, I'm going to talk about this one implementation that myself and my colleagues are working on. Um, uh, here's uh, I've just my, my sort of megalomaniac quality. If you want to email me after this, or if you want to follow me, on Twitter or whatever, just give me just give me a shout. Okay, so let me give a little bit of motivation, and I, I want to explain that I'm actually a, a researcher myself, and I I come at it as a, a researcher rather than say, say as a data manager and so on. So bear with me while these motivations all come from the, the research side of things. Okay, so as was very nicely put before I, before I even came up here, there's really a clear need for data science skills amongst researchers generically. And um, there is one particular angle that, that this, the schools that we're proposing are very much focused on is that this is particularly true for researchers from low and middle income countries, all right? There's a huge amount of open data that's out there. Researchers from LMIX really have a fantastic opportunity to go and do cutting edge science with all of that data that's out there, okay? So this is a moment for them to actually get a jump ahead and, and, and really, really push forward. And this is very much one of the things we, we really, really believe very, very profoundly on and sort of has predicated much of our choices for the initial locations for these schools. Now, I work in a computer science department and one of the things we've done is, is that we don't talk about for this school, we don't talk about data science, we talk about research data science, all right? Because quite honestly, with respect to data science, especially when you talk to computer scientists, they tend to think of it as this set of skills, quite specific, quite techie skills, you know, machine learning, big data analytics, MapReduce, all of those kind of, all of those sort of things, all right? How do I make sense of Twitter streams and all of that business? And, one of the things we want to make clear here, and I think it's very obvious from you know, the software carpentry movement, data carpentry movement, that these skills, <coughs> although this perhaps forms some subset somewhere down the road, is, is only a subset. There's a lot of other things that are, that are needed there. And actually, that chimes a lot with those of you who are working, for example, in the library sector. Okay. So, with respect to the schools that we're organizing, the curriculum is very much focused on four researchers, okay? That's the schools that we're setting up here, okay? And as I said, what we try to do is just give some introduction on a set of generic skills. So, with respect to our schools, sometimes people say to us, 
uh, okay, well, is this for bioinformaticians or is this for social science people? Say, no, in our current iteration, we're going to say anybody who's coming in there who's starting a PhD, who works with data, we want you to come along to these schools. All right? And the thing I'll be doing, and it's great that I've, I know that we're going to be followed up by all the people from software carpentry and data carpentry. I don't have to actually explain this in great detail. I'll, I'll leave that to them, which is this very, very just practical set of skills, learning by doing, rather than one lecture after another. Okay? And, you know, to know these are set of skills that we're talking about here that go way back, you know, th when people started doing, for example, the Strate O'Reilly survey. Even the, you could say it went back much further than that. So what do we mean by that? And again, I'll go into more details about that actual curriculum, but let me give that, that overview, which is, number one, annotate and publish your data, okay? Getting a researcher to understand that it's important to manage their data, annotate it appropriately, and then actually get it out there. Extracting and manipulating their data, all right? Understanding that all the time, your data is not actually on a plate for you. You have to spend most of your time working, getting the bits of data that you actually want from a particular data set. Analyzing and making sense of the data, which is really the kind of key skill for a researcher. And that's two sides of that. One is the visualization side, and the other side is understanding the significance of your data. And the last point is, is something that has sort of, we realized was, was, was missing in what we were doing. And we've had to, we've tweaked our curriculum a little bit, which is all of this is very, very do this, do this, this is good for you, do this, and so on. And there's a light motif going on here, which is about openness. Okay? And we realize that actually what we need to do is to get people to stop and thinking about that explicitly rather than what, we're, what we were initially doing, which is more or less kind of whispering this in, in people's ears and hoping that they would pick it, pick it up. Okay. So, to explain, we're going to do the schools that we're organizing. They will run over two weeks, all right? We will give them a break on the Saturday and the Sunday. So some may say, that's too much. Others will say, that's actually not enough, okay? But what we're going to do is we've got things that are running during the daytime, and if people want to do extra things, say, work with it, say, oh, I've got my own data set, and I want to try out my skills, do seminars, we'll organize that for things in the evening. All right? So here's what happens. It starts on working from Monday th through to the Friday. So on the first, the first day, what we'll do is we'll introduce open research data, okay? That whole data management side of things. And we'll also introduce this, a specific section on open science, which is not a huge chunk of time, but it's, it's you know, an hour, but just enough to get people reflecting and thinking. Then, for the rest of that week, we'll have data carpentry followed by software carpentry. The following week, sort of halfway through, we get started on a course on visualization of data, and again, remind people, why do you do open science? Then, for most of the rest of that week, we'll talk about, again, visualization and analysis, in other words, statistical inference of data, doing machine learning, those aspects there. Then finally, we wrap things up with a course on what we've titled computational infrastructures, which, we'll expl which I'll explain to you in a little bit. Okay. Now, on top of that, assuming that our introductory schools work well, we have a, a longer-term vision in place. Now, we're only just, we've only just put through the proposals for this to our hosts, and they still have to come back to us. But the idea is, is that we have our introductory school, 
which in some respect is setting up a common sort of generic set of skills that people will have. And that on top of that then, we build more advanced schools which people can then pick and choose as they want. And if the introductory course is decidedly generic, we may try and pick specific data sets as we work along, but it tries to be as, as generic as possible. These advanced courses tend to be more specific or will be more gen, uh, domain oriented. All right? So for example, advanced one might be say a bioinformatics course, which is, which is and it says, okay, people have come along, they've got these materials, now they can go and they can go, we've, learnt, we've taught them how to walk, now we'll teach them how to run in their area. So let me now spend a little bit more time talking about those individual courses, those individual modules that we had in there. Okay. So the first one was, as you said, this open science, okay, which is, again, it's not actually teaching anything per se. It's there to get people to reflect on things. So that's just going to be sort of short seminars saying there's an idea, open science. It's really useful for you. Why is it that it's important? And then getting people to do more open table sessions where people are saying, well, how do you think this could have an impact for you? As I said, one of the things we really, really want this, these, these schools are very much oriented towards are towards researchers from low and middle income countries. Many researchers from this area see, can see open science as very much something that, oh, okay, yeah, that's another thing that, you know, Harvard University thinks is a really nice idea, but you know, come on, I got my career to worry about. And actually, the whole the point about this is saying, no, it's something that's it's effective. It's really, really useful for you. It's not just being nice, it's something that can turbocharge your science. The section on open research data in a day and a half will try and just introduce the ideas of data sharing and open research. So what we'll do is, is over that period, we'll introduce <coughs> excuse me, the idea of publishing your data, why is it that it's important to curate the data, and providing the right sort of metadata standards. Why is it that all of those are using, for example, agreed metadata standards is something that's really, really useful. Okay? Again, all of this is oriented towards researchers who are for the most part, going to go in there and say, well, what has this got to do with my next paper? And so, again, this is motivating and saying, no, it really, really makes you more efficient. Okay? And it, with publishing, publishing your data sets, again, that's a serious win for you. With respect to software carpentry, our colleagues there will provide us with three of their fairly standard courses. So obviously, they'll do the Unix shell and Git courses that are there. And what we've decided to do, not, I have to stress, for in any way uh, you know, uh, a religious choice or anything like that. I'm a big fan of Python myself. Okay, we are, We're lumping for R, and that's going to be the, the language of choice, effectively, for the, for, the, for the whole school. If you ask me in a year's time, should we use Python rather than R? Again, I think it's, it's a point which is, which, is, which is arguable. As you said, we're open. We just think for the first time we'll do this, we'll do this with R, particularly for dealing with the visualization courses. All right? From our colleagues in data carpentry, uh, what they'll be doing is introducing the idea of using databases giving that motivation. Why is it that it's worth using databases? And introducing SQL databases, OK? How do we get to queries, aggregations, joins, those sort of concepts? Personally, I have, you know, if, if I regard these as sort of the, the high learning aims, I have, I have a personal low learning aim, which is if I can persuade one student to stop handing me Excel spreadsheets, which are tens of megabytes long, I will be jumping up and down and say, yes, this is, my time has been well spent. All right. How are we doing the time? Okay, two minutes. All right. 
our visualization course, again, we'll do things in R, and we'll have a workshop there. So instead of just sort of saying, here's the right way of showing data, here's the right way of showing data, we'll say to people, okay, go. Here's a bunch of data sets. Now you go and visualize it. We've shown you the tools. Analysis will be a combination of statistics and machine learning. That's going to be the trickiest one, I think, of the lot. There's a lot of material that we need to try and fit in there in that two-day period. But this is the start of a process and seeing what works. And then finally, this computational infrastructures course is basically about introducing people to cloud computing. So in particular, how do you get a virtual machine started? How do you use either a batch scheduler or how do you use a container? Okay. I think I can pretty much jump over this particular slide because we've got so many representatives from software and data carpentry. This is a, a phenomenal ped pedagogical model that software and data carpentry have put together. It's just, it's just, it's just fantastic. And you know, I, I want to stress again that all we're doing is we're saying what software and data carpentry are doing is fantastic, and we'd like to add on to that. And we're, we hopefully we're adding on and adding something useful to to what they're doing already. Okay. In terms of the, the long term vision, I think with this activity and all of the activities, for example, that's going on here and elsewhere, I think the long term success is where everybody in five to ten years just goes, just shrug their shoulders, and it's just become something that's just part of every university you know, degree, research-led degree, that you have this course stuck in there and people go and make use of it. The medium-term success, to get to that point here, is about scaling up schools. So one of the things we want to work on is that we will have lots of instru assistant instructor instructors in there who we hope will become the next generation of instructors. OK, so our first school is going to run this August from the 1st to the 12th. It's going to be happening in uh, Trieste in Italy. So Trieste, the ICTP, the International Center of Theoretical Physics, is a United Nations body, and they're very much mandated to uh, um, uh, assist developing world science. So they run workshops, summer schools, all the time, and they've got the, the framework for doing these kind of things. And we've got funding, initial funding from these organizations here, including CoData. We're aiming for up to 90 attendees. Maybe somewhere between 60 and 80 uh, attendees would be great. Okay? If you're interested in this, here's our link. Just in case you don't know your geography, there's Trieste. And let me also just, uh, again, I'm going to be shameless and show you just some, here's the building where it'll all be happening, and this is the view <laughs> from the building. All right? But of course, Nobody will be paying attention to that because they'll all be working in the basement. <laughs> all right. The last thing I'd just like to add, I know I'm running over, is just to note that um, uh, these guys here are my partners in crime. Andrew Harrison, who's based at the University of Essex, and Simon Hodson, who's the executive director of CoData. All right. Thank you. That's everything. Thanks.